I've been watching lots of game development YouTubers recently, and then I thought, wait, I do YouTube and I know how to code. Why don't I try game development? So I set myself a challenge. For the next seven days, I have to learn as much as I can about 3D game development. I started by dusting off Unity. I used it once for a university project, but the project looked like this. I jumped around a couple of tutorials explaining stuff and just made notes on stuff that didn't sound familiar to me. I got a bit carried away and ended up spending two hours on this. I really like the look of third person games like Risk of Rain 2, No Man's Sky, so I decided I wanted to make a third person game. I started off by creating our player. Let's call him Rob. I set off trying to create some sort of movement and somehow making the camera follow the player. Not too long into it, I tried to rename the level and it, uh... So after making Rob again, I got basic movement working, then I got jumping and gravity working. Bye, have a great time! So, I got the movement and camera working, but for some reason my mouse controls were flipped. After googling for ages, rewatching the tutorial like three times looking for things I missed, I found the actual issue. Third person movement and camera sorted. The world wasn't exactly very exciting, but that's nothing the Unity Asset Store can't solve. I spent a little while arranging stuff how I liked it and came up with this alien world thing. However, now Rob didn't fit into it very well. Because I stole literally all of the environment from the asset store, I decided I wanted to make Rob's character model from scratch. I had a grand vision in my head of exactly what I was going to do, and with my grand vision in mind, I downloaded Blender for the first time and got to work. Hey guys, and welcome back. Okay, so I feel confident enough to attempt something now. Right, yeah, a uh, little square there. Yeah, extrude that a bit. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <coughs> Unity asset store. So now we have Rob, but he doesn't have any animations. Now he does. Easy, right? It's been two hours, I really don't want to do this anymore. On the end of day two, I wrote that I want laser eyes and enemies that explode when you laser the shit out of them, because that would look good on video and give me lots of views. So I was scrolling through the asset store, you know, just part of my daily routine now, looking for enemy models, when I saw it. On to shooting. I tried various ways of trying to code this, first starting with an actual bullet model, which didn't end up working too well. Eventually I got sick of trying to get the bullet to work and I just made them die when you click in the middle of your screen, but that's kind of boring. We can fix that. I added particle effects to make it look like they're exploding into a massive pile of goo. Then I added screen shake to the effect, which totally didn't take like three hours. It's now day four and I'm losing my will to live, but I added a laser which originates from the top of his head and the way that I did that was with like, code and shit. <sighs> Currently, the enemies just don't really do very much. I started messing around with the Unity AI system and eventually managed to make them follow Rob if he got too close. And if they get even closer, then... Whenever I was working on the game, there was always something staring at me. I had no idea what it did and I wanted to find out more about it. That thing was shaders. Turns out that they're actually pretty cool. After messing around for a bit, the only vaguely useful thing I made is this drunk effect, which reminds me of the one from GTA. Then I got bored and decided to look into procedural terrain. Anyway, I followed a tutorial and got something like this working. Pretty cool. I then put some trees in, copied some of Rob's code over, made a new character, let's call him James, bada beam bada boom, we have a new game. Now you may be thinking that was easy, but I skipped like 50 other steps, including raging at the animations for 40 minutes about why they were moving my character on their own, only to find out I yet again missed a checkbox. Oh, those errors? Yeah, don't mind those. On day 6 I coded in some melee combat with my sick coding skills, and learned how to make animations only affect the character's upper body so I could play attack and walk animations at the same time. The thing is, the enemy dies as soon as you click the button, not when the sword actually hits it. I spent way too long trying to fix this properly, in the end I just made the code wait half a second and it worked super well. I wanted to add some polish, I added running, Yoinked the enemy code from my first game into this game, slapped on an animation, made them spawn randomly around the map, and boom, we have working enemies. I also want to add post-processing, but to do that I have to change my render pipeline or something? What's that? You have to make a backup. Pfft, I don't need a backup. 
Well, guess we won't be working on that game anymore. Since it's day 7 and I don't really have time to make another game from scratch, I thought I'd revisit Shaders. I remembered I watched this video by Sebastian Lake about ray marching, and it looks really fucking cool. So I thought I'd try coding it myself. <sighs> Long story short, ray marching casts a line, or ray, out from your camera. When the line hits something, it will be drawn. We can tell it what to hit using a distance function. We can put fancy maps in there and make some really cool stuff. First, I made some basic shapes, but that's kind of boring. The distance functions require some pretty complex maths, but I don't know maths. So I resorted to just mashing my keyboard and seeing what comes out. I actually ended up making some pretty cool things. I also copied some code from Sebastian Legg's video to render this 3D fractal, which looked really cool in my opinion. I wish I could have rendered it to the camera, but I didn't get time to. Maybe next time. This would be the part where I tell you to watch my other game development videos, but this is actually my first one. There will be more though, so for now I'll do the classic YouTuber thing and tell you to go smash that like button, smash that notification bell so you know when I next post a new one.